Hi, my name is Meredith and I'm the lead educator here at the Children's Museum of New Hampshire. The museum is a really great place to learn all kinds of new fascinating information from science and history to geography and art. Today, we're going to be putting on our scientist hats as we enter the exciting world of simple machines. The human body is an amazing machine. It's just that sometimes we need a little bit of help to get jobs done. But there are a lot of tools that we can use in combination with our remarkable bodies that can really help us. These tools can be made of lots of different materials, like wood, plastic, or metal. These tools work with us to make us feel stronger and help us get jobs done faster. In science, these tools that make our lives so much easier are called simple machines. So, what do you think of when you hear the word machine? Tree cutter, maybe. A bus. Um, airplane. Like a coffee maker or something. Um, a bowl rose. We have a stove and oven. Like a transformer type. A car. And there's a sewing machine. And um, different things. Oh, we have a snow blower. <laughs> Um, a washer. Dryers. A boat. There's clocks. <laughs> a uh, dishwasher. Lawnmower. Ferris wheel. Well, a machine in science is simpler than any, any of that. It's anything that makes a force bigger. We use force all the time. In anything we do, we're using a constant pushing and pulling action called a force. And I mean anything at all to get out of bed, to jump up and down, even to brush your hair. You're using a force. If someone says they're strong, it really means that their body can apply a lot of force. However, some things are just too heavy for any human body to be able to move. So that's where we use simple machines. Simple machines make our lives easier because they allow us to do less work. So, let's say that I need to get this nail into this piece of wood. without a simple machine to help me. Hmm. This hammer is a simple machine. Let's give it a try. Take a look. The head of the hammer is bigger than the head of the nail. So when I hit it, that force has a big pressure on a fairly small area. A 
lever is a stiff board or bar that rests on a turning point called a fulcrum. A lever can be used to lift or move something. Levers reduce the amount of force required by increasing the distance over where the force acts. My friend Riley is going to help me demonstrate how this seesaw, or lever, works. All right, now I'm gonna try to lift Riley. If I'm sitting right next to the fulcrum, it's very difficult to get him up off the ground. When I move up a little bit, it gets easier, but still kind of tricky. I'll get up even further. That's much easier. How about if I get on the other end of the lever? Let's see. Ah, oh, it's a piece of cake. Hi, we're here in beautiful Henry Law Park, and I have to get this heavy box all the way to the museum. I have to use a great deal of force to move it. Why? Friction. Friction is resisting the motion of the object on the ground. when force is applied to them. load on the axle and push it, the rolling of the wheels reduces the friction and makes it easier for us to accomplish our task and get the box to where it needs to be. You use wheels and axles every day. Think about cars, bikes, or even your skateboard. will open the sail to help us get there. Here it goes. Hmm. This is harder than I thought. Oh. Maybe a simple machine would help. I've decided to install a simple machine known as a pulley. A pulley is a grooved wheel with a rope that helps lift or lower objects. Pulleys increase the distance over which the force works. The more pulleys in a system, the less work you have to do. Let's see if my new pulley makes lifting and lowering my gondolo sail any easier. at the Dover Rotary Skate Park. And we have our trusty red wagon again. 
so let's say that I need to get these boxes of supplies onto this half pipe. I have two options. A, I can lift the wagon and put it directly on the half pipe. Or B, I can roll the wagon onto the half pipe using this ramp. First, let's try option A. This is a big upward force as the wagon moves a short upward distance. Okay, now let's try option B, moving the wagon up the ramp or incline plane. Here, I was using a small upward force over a big distance. So overall, I was doing less work and it was much easier. Our next simple machine is a wedge. A wedge is made up of two inclined planes that meet at a sharp point. Let's take this apple, for example. If I try to split it apart with my hands, it's really tricky. But if I use a knife, is two inclined planes meeting at a sharp point, it's easy to split it up into pieces. Because the knife is a wedge. Believe it or not, your front teeth are wedges too. It's easy to bite into the apple because your teeth are splitting it apart with so much force. is a really long inclined plane that's wrapped around a pole. Now, that might sound a little bit confusing. So imagine that I need to climb something really, really high. I have two options. Option A is that I can climb it like it's a ladder. It'll be a shorter distance, but I'll have to work really hard to make it all the way up there. Option B is that I can walk up the screw thread. It's like walking up a spiral staircase. I'll walk further, but it'll be a lot easier. Now that you're all experts on simple machines, you'll start to see them everywhere in the world around you. That doorknob, that's a wheel and axle. The shovel you use in the winter to help with snow, that's a lever. Ever pull up the blind on a window? That's a pulley. Take a minute to look around the room you're in right now and see if you can find any simple machines. I bet there are a lot. Have fun exploring the exciting world of simple machines and investigating how they work and how they make our lives easier. Yeah.